Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Too Good To Be True podcast. I am your host, uh, before, I, before I start this, let me check the sound. Hello? 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 Okay, hello, hello? Okay, fine. So, let me restart all over. Welcome to the Too Good To Be True podcast. I am your host, Pascal Mayala. Uh, today we do have a lot of topics to talk about uh, today. The NBA season um, is over. NFL news, Arizona Coyotes uh, are probably going to move to the uh, Utah. And uh, finally, uh, Kaden Clark uh, uh was on uh, uh, SNL uh, Saturday uh, uh, Saturday night. So yeah, ready to so buckle up. So sorry if my voice like that. I do have a problem with my voice. So let's get started. So let's go see um, what happened to the uh, to the last game of the uh, NBA season. So let's look at it right now. We're gonna look at it. If you miss, so it was pretty much the last uh, season uh, before the play-in and before the playoffs. So let's recap this. Um, let's recap this. So we had the the wizard at the South at Boston for the final game. Uh, Celtic won by ten points. Ten points. They are. Let me see their leading scoring. The leader scoring. Uh, I, 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 I'm assume. I'm assume. It's gonna be like what Jason. Jason is gonna be the. No, no, they didn't play, so I didn't really fight game that much. So I know this thing. They're resting, so there was nothing to say about that. Uh, because they're trying to prepare for the playoff. So good win for the Celtics. Next game, the Hornets leaders. Uh, Hornets won by ten points. By ten points. And now the, the what the Hornets are like fifth, fifth, and the fourth seed. So I'm not surprised about that. Versus the um. Uh, the Indiana, yeah, the versus the third. Ooh, what a blowout! The 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 Pacer blew out the, the 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 which it was unexpected, by the way, because I knew the the Pacers gonna win this game. Um, yeah, the Pacers would have won that game anyway. So, and also, by the way, the 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 without Trey Young. I believe the uh, DeJounte Murray play, yeah. If DeJounte Murray play, that's, oh, I'm, I'm fine with because you need to be prepared for the play game. So, good win for the Pacers. For the Pacers. My Raptors against the Miami Heat. Heat were not expecting anything that was not very important. So, Heat won the game. So, Raptors are in the rebuild for this next season. So the Miami Heat are in the play-in. Now, this is the one I was talking. This one, there were three games that was I was more interesting to watch: the Bulls versus the Nets, the Bucks versus the Magic, and the Nets versus the Seventy Sixers. So let's start with the Nets versus the the Nets versus the uh, the Bulls on this on my head. So great win for the for the Knicks in overtime, winning by one. And those. The Bulls, uh, they were not playing. So, uh, there was nothing. There was nothing to, uh, there were, um, to do. So they're already in the plane. But for the Knicks, it was very important to them because if they win and the Bucks lose, the the Nets will be in the second in, in, in the second seed of the Eastern Conference. 
and that they mean the Bucks are in the third seed. So lucky for them, the Bucks lost. Nets won by one point. Jalen Brunson had a phenomenal, a fantastic game. Um, he had 41 minutes. 40, 41 minutes. He had 40 points, 10 rebounds, four, four assists. So in the field goal, he had like 14 to 13. One on four on the three points. Well, yeah, 11 for 12 for the free throw line. So I wasn't surprised for Jalen Bronson on this one. But also, also it was contributed by DiVincenzo. So Divin, DiVincenzo, who had a good, a good, pretty good game. 25 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, uh, 2 steals, uh, 10 for 11, 21 in the field goal, 5, five for 14. In the, in the three point, which I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised about that. And uh, whew, man, for the Bulls, I feel bad because they didn't have you no, know, they didn't have Andre Drummond, they didn't have uh, big guys inside. So the, the, the only re- they relied on the uh, 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 on Vucevic. Demar Derozan got a phenomenal game, thirty points, uh, five rebounds, seven assists. Uh, 11 for 24 in the field goal, like two for four in the three point, and six for eight in the free throw line. So they played. I don't think they, they played less than more. But for this particular game, it was more important for the New York Knicks to win the to, to win the game for to lock to lock uh, for the uh, second seed. Right before I continue to talk, I want you guys to like, subscribe, notify, and comment on my on my on this YouTube channel. If I to 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 to, to let me read your comment and what can I improve better? What what do you think? What's your opinion? And everybody's opinion. Too good to be true. Podcast is open for everybody. You have your opinion. I will I will read it, I'll read your comment and so on and so forth. But also I want you guys to listen to this podcast on on Apple Podcast, Spotify, uh Amazon Music, any platform you see this uh, uh podcast is is open for everybody to listen. Whatever you listen, you can listen to your uh, on your on your phone, on your computer, so on and so forth. And also, rate the start because it's very important for me to know what, what do I, what what what's the five star you want to give it? What's five? What what do you rate on this uh, on this podcast? So thank you very much. Let's continue. Let's continue. Like I said, the game was more important for the New York Knicks. Can I say the same thing for the uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks who lost to the? The Orlando Magic, no, no, Damian Litter. Actually, sorry, no, no, not no, no, Giannis Antetokounmpo, no, uh, uh, his brother. Uh, but later played, by the way. So let's see. Let's look to the box score right now. Uh, they lost to the Magic, so they're looking for the feet. So, oh, sorry, my bad. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, my. Bad. Let's look at it. Can we look at it? Okay. Yeah, no Demir didn't play. He played like he played a lot. Demir played the Bobby and Kirschman didn't play a lot of minutes. So did to be honest. Uh, out of the Kumpo. Demiller with uh how many Demiller with sixteen points, uh four rebounds, two assists, uh, one steal. You know, that's not really a, a Damian Litter game you, that we expect to see. But I understand why. I understand why they did this to lock into the third seed. I I didn't mind that. 
So for a young upper upper coming rising uh uh, uh Orlando Magic, Paolo Bacchero had twenty six points, eleven rebound and, and seven assists. So so uh the, the, that's what you expected for Orlando Magic. So they're already locked into the fifth seed. And uh and uh, now I think they're gonna face the Cavaliers in the playoff, but we will be talking about it later, and we, we, we will play a game also. So, so the, the next game we want to talk about is the 76 the Nets. So there was not a lot of expectation, not expectation. One, they 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 they're in the they're in the playing tournament. So uh, great win for Philly, for the Nuggets, and really the Nuggets need to win. I was saying in my head, wins the game, and OKC wins the game. Open the number one seed, seed, and that's what really happened. The, the, uh, th- and also thanks to the loss of the Timberwolf, which we will talk about them later against the Sun. So, so let, let let's look at the the the, the Nuggets, uh, the Nuggets versus the, uh. uh it was the Grizz he played. He had 15 points. Uh, and I did uh, yeah, triple this time. Uh, 15 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. Country Jamal Murray, who had 2 points, and a rebound for it. So, there was, so it was like a tough one. So, I'm, I'm not really surprised because they're already uh, locked into the playoffs. So, so, uh, so they're number 2 seed. Not much for the uh, Timberwolf. So I, I said this. I, I did say it, but I like, I watched all the most important game in my house. I was really locked in, very focused on that game of uh, the uh, of the a uh, 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 Timberwolf Nuggets clip uh, Nuggets uh, Grizzlies and other team. Right now, so fourth I thought they should have won, but but the sun led them more than ten points, and 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 the Phoenix Sun were in a mission to not uh, to not be in the play-in tournament. So that's why they did. So Kevin Durant had fifteen points, two, four rebound, and one assist. Compared to Bradley Beal, who Bill had a nominal game for the uh, for the final season, for the final season, he had thirty six points, thirty six points, six rebounds, five assists. D book twenty three points, four rebounds, seven assists. Compared to the Timberwolf, uh, Car Anthony Town, you know, he had ten points. Uh, that's not real, Car Anthony Town. Uh, how he played, but I understand why he just came back from injury, so he wants to adjust with the team. Rudy Gobert had a phenomenal game: twenty-one points, seven rebound, one assist. Anthony Edwards thirteen points, six rebound, four assists. So it, it, I felt I felt bad for them because they didn't they didn't uh, 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 a lot get the number one seed. But hell, this is a preview. Which we will get to later. I'm not gonna. I don't want to spoil it. I think if you if you watch the game, you already watched. So you know the standing. If you did not, uh, I will say it later. I will keep it for later. The OKC with the Dallas Mavericks. It it, it it was a blowout game. It was a blowout game. The Lakers versus the the Kings. That was important. Important. Important uh, uh, game for it because if the Pelicans lose, they go going to play in. If the Pelicans win, make the seed six seed. Unfortunately, it was there. It was too much. It was too much for the for the for them. The Lakers uh, beat the uh, the Pelicans one hundred twenty four to one eighteen and. I don't want to put the rest of the game, but that's not important. But for but the Sacramento King, it was very important. So 
so they're they're in the I believe they're in the play in tournament. Yeah, they're in the play in tournament. Same thing for the Warriors, so there's nothing to add. Now let's play let's 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 play let's look let's look at the standing right now. We're gonna look at the standing right now. Let's look at the standing. Now like I said, like I said, the boss already locked into the off one seed. New York State on number C, Bucks number Cavs, Magic, uh, the 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 Pacers six. Now the 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 Philadelphia seven, Miami eight, Chicago nine, and let the Hawks ten. Let's play a game of what if with the Eastern Conference. So the Knicks, like I said, they won the second seed. But what if they play against the Philadelphia 77 for the seventh seed? Because I do have an issue with the New York Knicks. The front, the, the back court, I don't have a problem. But if it's the front court, I have a problem because you don't have no Julius Randle. And 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 Mitchell Roberts just came back. I don't think he can guard uh, Joel Embiid. Same thing for uh, a, a Presta Chua. Will, will Tom Thibodeau play Presta Chua? The, will uh, 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 Tom Thibodeau uh, uh, will let him play? Let him play because they need that 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 body to guard Joel and B. They need that body. And I think Mitchell Robinson is the one, but my concern is if he doesn't play in the playoff, will the New York Knicks will play small ball? Because Julius Randle is injured. You don't have you don't have that much in uh, uh, the front court is pretty much an issue. Will Jalen brought to play more minutes because I'm worried. About the uh, about the uh, uh, Jalen Bronson because if he plays a lot of minutes, do you think they will it will put out? Of, do you think they're gonna take put up out of gas for 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 Jalen Bronson? Because if he, because if he play more minutes, I'm afraid that we're gonna we're gonna see the same situation with the Derrick Rose. If you remember. Derrick Rose play a lot of minutes, and I think that's also led him for for the, for the injury. So that's my concern. If he, if they play with the, the, the for the, against Philly now, if they play against the Miami Heat now, the New York Knicks has the advantage. But also, like I said, the front court with Bam out of bio. And you know, playoff Miami Heat in the playoffs, they're no joke. Playoff Heat is 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 a different ball game. Playoff Jimmy Butler is a different ball game. So that's my two concerns with the Nets. Now for the now for Milwaukee Bucks against the Indiana Pacers. That's also a game we have to watch. We have to keep your eye on. They're going to play against each other. Uh, I recently heard an interview uh, that uh, it, it, Walsh asked a question to Ty, Tyler, Ty, I mean, Tyler Hallenburn. He said that you think that the Pacers and the Bucks or a rivalry because remember it's, it it started in the in the in the play in the in season tournament in season tournament. So so I, it could be it could be very interesting. That's the game I really want to be focused. 
But if Giannis will play, do you think Giannis will play this season? Do you think he's going to play in the playoffs? Because he's injury, and, uh, and they need rest, so I'm glad they're resting. They're resting right now. Because if uh, Giannis doesn't play, the Pacers will win against the... I'm not going to do my prediction. The Pacers are going to win the series. So to me, that's my concern with the Bucks for the for the playoff. Now let's go to the West because I think I think I, I think I predict for the Bulls and the in the in the Hawks because if the if the Hawks or or the or the or the or the, or the Bulls playing against the, the Celtics for the eight seed, you know you know they'll get they'll get a uh, not sweat but. Probably gonna get beat. So let's go to the Western Conference. Like I said, OKC, number one seed, tied with the Denver Nuggets, who are the number two seed. Timberwolves on the number three seed, Clippers four, Dallas five, uh, the Sun six. Now let's play a what if with them. Uh, let's start with the Wolf with the Phoenix Sun. If the Suns lose to the first round, do you think that big three in the Sun is a, is a failure or a success? Because to me, to me, to me, As a, is it more as a failure than a success? It is more about uh, Bradley Beal, who is the X factor. Who is the X factor of this team? Because remember, they didn't play. Too long. They didn't, they didn't play that much with the, with each other. Those big three. They didn't play with each other that long. So that that's why I asked the question: If the 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 Suns can handle. Or can beat the Timberwolves because the Timberwolves in the front court they're very loaded. And my question also for for the Wolf is Carl Anthony Town, who is the X factor to me. What would happen? Because he he needs to take the advantage. The advantage is in is upon on Carl Anthony Town. Anthony Edwards will do his thing. Rudy Gobert will do his thing. But my question is, can Carl Anthony Town use his size to be on the down on the, on the low post? Post post him up a little bit. So that's my question for the Wolf. Now, another question we have to ask is the uh, the Clippers and the Dallas Mavericks. This is the third time they're meeting in the last five years. Can Luka get, get, get over the hump beating the Clippers? Now that you have Kyrie, now that you have a defensive presence, on the team. That's the question for the. That's the question for uh, uh, to uh, to ask in the playoff. Now for the for the Clippers. Can the Clippers be healthy? Can the Clippers be healthy? 
Because that's my concern at all. That's my really concern with the Clippers. The Clippers, to me, are fraudulent. Because one thing could happen, if they get injured, it's over for them. So that's why I said, I asked the question, can uh, the Clippers be healthy? And can James Harden also? Because I don't want... Can James, Harden, can James Harden can perform? But we've seen James Harden disappear in some game, in some series. So that's the question we have to ask ourselves for the Clippers. Not for the play in tournament. You got, like I said, the Pelicans are facing the Lakers. Are the Lakers. Win this game, they get the number seven seed, mm-hmm. and they face the Nuggets because they won the. Because I know the Lakers won the revenge. If you don't remember, last year they got swept against the Nuggets. So that's the question we have to ask ourselves with the with the Lakers. Now for the Pelicans. Can Zion be healthy? Now, I know this season Zion is, is playing phenomenal right now. Can Zion be healthy and probably take the maybe they probably are gonna lose? I don't I don't have the prediction yet. Can this Pelican beat the Lakers? That's the question. Now, for Golden State and Sacramento Kings, both of them are meeting again. Last time they met, it was in the first round of the playoff. The question we can ask for them, is this the end for this dynasty of the Golden State Warriors? Is this the end of a dynasty that we that we did not see it coming in 2014-2015 season with Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, and Steph Curry? We don't know about that question until we see it. Sacramento Kings. I know you guys, it was a disappointment, it's an up and down season. Malik Monk is injured. But if if the uh, the Sacramento Kings beat the Lakers, uh, the, sorry, beat the Warriors, do you think it's a success or a failure? So that's the question we're asking for them, for the Sacramento Kings. Because I know that the Sacramento Kings are often very good. But on defense, they suck. So, that's the question we have to ask ourselves for the uh, 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 Sacramento King. So, those are the uh, uh, the recap and the standing that of uh, 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 each team. So uh, we cannot wait to see who's going to be the number eight, the seven seed, eight seed in the in, in, in the in the playoffs. Switching gears right now, and switching gears, and I mean, uh, we uh, with with no laughter. Yeah, I'm not joking around, people. But this is a, 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 a very a, a sad 
for the people in Phoenix. If you are a, uh, a Coyote fan, you should be uh, uh, very sad to see. Very sad. Because there's been rumors. We don't know. We, we don't. We don't. We don't know if it is true. We have to wait until um, uh, the April 18th. So that means it's gonna be what, like a uh, what is it? Like a Thursday to confirm if it is true that the uh, uh, Arizona uh, Coyotes are moving to Utah. Because I don't want to see a team lose their team because a bad owner, a bad front office, we can say that, that making the bad decision. So I am I am looking at the uh, I am at the Bleacher Report right now. Uh, right now I am in a bitch report, so I'm gonna I, I will share it for a couple. Of, I will share it. What the uh, what they trying to say? So I'm gonna pretty much hold on. I'm probably gonna share it right uh, right now. Right now, hold it. Just gonna share it. There's been rumors about the coyotes. So let's read let's read this uh, shall we? According to Bleacher Report, Coyotes players are informed of Salt Lake City's relocation for 2024-2025 season. Arizona Cardinal players have reportedly have been informed that the team is moving to the Salt Lake City, Utah, per NHL insider Elliot Fred Fredman. Players and staff may be headed to Salt Lake City right after Wednesday's game to check out the facility in the city, Friedman reported. According to Friedman reported, now according to Elliot Friedman, more than still work to do. The timing obviously is fluid, but players were told of the petting move and there will be, there will be an, an opportunity to see potential new surroundings. The news followed the report from Frank Sarah Valley of the Daily of the Daily Face of as well as ESPN Emily Kaplan and Greg uh, Wyszynski that the NFL was putting together a, con a contingency to plan to relocate the Coyotes to Utah as soon as the 2024-2025 season in the wake of the franchise past and present issue to find a, a suitable location. For the new arena. So this is the uh, uh, the Arizona uh, uh, X formerly Twitter account uh, uh, st uh, um, um, uh, tweet and uh, and that the statement from the Arizona Coyote chairman and governor Alex uh, Morello. So let's read the 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 statement. What he what he wrote. He said that there has been a lot of discussion in recent in recent today about the future of the Arizona Coyotes. I understand and empathize with this uh, with the concern of our fans, our community, our partners, our players, our front office, and all of our team members. I hope to address this issue as soon as I am able to speak on the topic. We are focused on the on the maraid of the issues that that are unresolved, and and therefore we are unable to make an official public comment at this time. However, you have you have my commitment that I am going to speak on all on this issue and publish and publish and publish publicly address all all of your concern as prominently as possible. Respectfully, Alex Morello.
So this is what he said on on, on, on his account, on his state, on his account on uh, actually on the Arizona Coyote uh, X formerly Twitter account. Before I continue. I got to admit that this is sad. This is sad. All those years, the Coyotes could not get another, could not uh, 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 get a, uh, a built an arena for them. All those years. And I'm not really like the whole a hundred percent hockey fan. But I'm a, I'm a casual fan. But when stuff like that happens, you gotta blame on one person. You gotta blame the chairman of of, of uh, the chairman and the president of the uh, Arizona Coyotes, the front office, because they cannot. Do this to the fan, especially in Arizona. I saw I saw something in uh, I saw uh, on uh, on YouTube because I was I was just listening what those people are trying to say that the Arizona is uh, Phoenix is like the fifth largest uh, biggest city in the United States. The people in uh, uh, the community in Phoenix is amazing. Yeah, I know it's in the desert. So, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I would not live in Phoenix in the summer, but, but I will say this I feel bad for the fans. Let's continue, let's continue to read this. Let's continue to read this right now. Let's continue. So, the Coyotes have been playing at Arizona State University Millet since the since the Glendale uh, terminated at least with the team for the them to use Gila River Arena after the 2021-2022 season. The team has publicly stated that it's planned to bid for a 95-acre par uh, parcel in the land of the North Phoenix that will go up for auction on June 27. Uh, however, oh, this is this is this, 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 this is amazing. However, this news has run parallel with the, with the Smith Entertainment Group, the parent company of the NBA Utah Jazz. A press expressing a desire to bring an NHL team to Salt Lake City. A group led by the Jazz govern, uh, Governor Ryan Smith. Per Ian Mendes and Athletic of the Athletic, ha they have an arena in the place for the team to play in Delta Center to start before the potential moving to a brand new stadium. They also have politically uh, backing in place. Let's say it in a quote. This is the Salt Lake City Mayor, Aaron uh, Mandelno, said, and I quote, We are eager, we are able to leverage two or three times private money with taxpayer money. As far as the uh, logistics go, Kaplan and Wyshewski explained the sale process beginning with the league buying the Coyotes from the owner, Alex Marillo. And I quote, the NHL will purchase the Coyote from uh, the Mariolo uh, in a deal believed to be worth around $1 billion. This will mark the second time that the NHL will have owned the Coyotes, buying the franchise from, from the owner, former owner, Jerry Moyes, in 2009, after he filed a bankruptcy, the league owned and they operate the Coyotes until 2013. Let's let's read it again. Let's let's read it again. 
The league source said to purchase the team. The NHL would then sell the clip at a price that could be ironed up. The third would also split $3 million in sales. According to you approved the deal in their June meeting. That means maybe this month, month of June. And so by giving the last approval, an approval appear to be formal, uh, formally at this junction. So those are the news about the Coyotes. If I'm a Coyote fan, I'll, I'll be very disappointed with the owner, uh, like I said, uh, Mr. Murello, whatever his name is, Murello. Because that's what happens when you have bad owner who don't know how to, 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 uh, to, to, to establish a franchise to uh, to try to build another another uh, 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 um, uh, arena in Phoenix, but I won't I, I will not mind that one day the 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 Arizona Coyotes, Coyotes come back to Phoenix. Probably around 2030, 30, 30 or 31, something like that. But if I'm a, a Coyote friend, I'll be disappointed. But we don't. But 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 I'll say this: it's not confirmed yet. So we gotta. Rem, I, I gotta remind you: it's not confirmed. This is what I read. We will see on April 18th. If it's if it's true or not, if it is true, and you know what it remind me of? It remind me of the Oakland A's, but I don't know that th that detail because I not, I don't follow baseball like that. It's like the Oakland A's. They they wanted to move. They want actually they are uh, they are moving. They are they're gonna to move to Las Vegas in what what in what is it like in a couple of years in 2024, 20, 25, 20, let's say the 26, 27, 20, uh, 26, 27, around around that uh that March. And you got a bad owner doesn't know how to how to uh gel a, a, a franchise. And this is what the consequence is. The, now the, the, the Oak, people in Oakland don't have their team. They don't have the Raiders. They're in Las Vegas. They don't have the, the Warriors. They're in San Francisco. And now the A's, they're now they're in Las Vegas. This is what happens when you have people who don't know how to uh, own a team. So uh, that's how I gotta say about that for the for for this uh, subject. And uh, the people of Arizona, the people who are Coyote fans, I with you. I I I I, I with you on that. So moving for the next topic. Uh, and if, let's let's see some NFL news right now before So let's go to the NFL news uh what's going on right now before and before we actually before not this second one but we're gonna close it out. Let's 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 read one or two. One or two uh, uh, news. So let's read this. Wait, I'm gonna share it. I want to share it again. I'm still on Bridger Report, people. 
Let's go. Let's start from the beginning. So, let's go to the NFL. So, Von Miller, Von Miller suggests that the Bills could be trading up. So, let's, 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 let's look at it right before. So, Von Miller, he posted a, a, video, a, a viral meme on video on um, for the right receiver. Uh, I think it was Stephon Diggs. He got traded to the Houston Tech. So, I, 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 we don't have it. So let's see what so let's see uh what what he said. What did he say? Oh, oh this is funny. So this is one minute what he said. He said, Brendan Bean arriving to the 2024 NFL draft to trade up for a rare receiver. It's Bean with trust. Phil Mafia left for at LF, LFG. So, I mean, let's fucking go. So, people, the people who don't know. And you know what? <laughs> I love this meme. You know what? I do love this meme. Uh, uh, this, this meme. I believe it was Lil Yachty, Lil Yachty in that concert. I believe it was Coachella. I don't know, but hey, if 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 uh, if if, uh, if if the if the GM want to want to want to go to the draft uh, draft another wide right receiver, I I, I I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. And I I know losing Stefan Diggs is a huge is a huge piece for, but I will not be shocked if the draft receiver. So so I don't mind I don't mind about the Van Byron. So next next news we have the prediction of uh, the top uh, QBs be draft who's good. Who's gonna be? Where are they gonna draft? So I know Chicago. That, that is a lock. And I, the and the uh, and the uh, and Callum Williams is is a great fit because he's in the right situation at the right time. So according to Bleacher Report, it said that some years not many quarterbacks can be uh, taken in the first round of the NFL draft. For example, the 2022 when only Kenny Pickett was the only QB selected within the first 32 picks. Going to the Pittsburgh Steelers at number twenty, there will certainly be multiple quarterbacks getting taken on on the opening night on the 2024 draft, which is set up to the, the April 20, 2025 2027 in Detroit. There could even be more multiple quarterback selection conservatively to begin the event. So here's a look at where some of the mock. Recent mock have been projecting the top quarterback on the class and getting to the sign turn for a quarterback. And UNC. So, according to ESPN, actually, according to everybody, ESPN, the Athletics, the NFL Network, and NFL.com, they said they're picking number one over the Chicago Bears. It's not so prime. So, we don't need to read this. So we don't need to read this. So Drake Mayer, Drake May, this is the interest. So Mel, Mel Kuyper Jr. said he's going to be the number one three pick in the New England Patriots. Same thing with Matt Miller and Jordan Reed. The Athletic, uh, Bruce Feldman, chose think he's going to play for the England Patriots. Oh, that's not. But Athletic, Nick, Bargardner, Bargardner said that he's going to be number two pick for the Washington Commanders. Same thing with Red Lewis from NFL Network. Or the NFL uh, last deadline says something interesting. He said that 
He won the number one three pick from the New York Giants. A trade, which is very interesting. A trade. Which somewhat I don't see it. I don't think Drake May and New York Giants will go hand in hand. I do not think so. I don't I don't see it. I don't I don't, I don't see that. Jaden Jaden Daniel. So according to Mel Kuyper, he said he's gonna get drafted by Washington Commander. Same thing for Matt Miller and Jordan Reed. Same thing for the athletic Bruce Feldman, number one, number number two pick. Nick Bargarner said he should be the number three picks. Same thing for the Red Lewis at the NFL Network. But NFL uh, Lance uh, uh, Zierland said number two pick for the Washington Commander. So number three pick with a Patriot. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't really see it. I'll be honest with you. I don't see it. And finally, last and finally, JJ McCarty. According to Mel Kuyper, so he could get drafted to the Minnesota Vikings via a trade of Los Angeles Ram. There's a lot of different thoughts on this one. So same thing with Mike Miller. Uh, number four pick to the Minnesota Viking trade from Arizona Cardinal. Same thing with the athletic Bruce uh, Feldman. Same thing with the athletic Dick uh, Bongarner. Same thing. And the front network, Red Lewis said that he should be the number 10 pick to the Denver Broncos from a trade from the New York Jets. And also Lance Levin, they said the same thing. Minnesota is like in trade for Arizona. But the number 10 pick, that's a very that's very interesting. Because Sean Payton, if you know Sean Payton, he has he wants a, a quarterback to be like, you know, like Drew Brees. Which I don't mind that. So so uh I don't mind that uh, JJ go to the Broncos because I think he will be a, a perfect fit for the sit with Sean Payton. And finally, uh, finally, uh, Brandon Ayu said that he did not a trade, and and one of his agents said he did not that that uh that that uh he traded. We don't know proof. I'll just continue. This. I just need second, but whatever. Uh, you heard what I said. So, those are our news. Those are our news for the uh, for the NFL. Also, this one news for because I saw something on on um, on. Um, the NFL is that uh, 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 Devontae Adam is really committed with the Raiders. So uh, this is a good sign. I don't think he's getting traded anywhere. So I didn't buy it that uh, um, uh, Devontae Adam will be traded. So uh, that those rumors have to be debunked. And finally, our final segment. Uh, for today, uh, Caitlin Clark was on was on uh, 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 SNL uh, Saturday night. He was on SNL. So, uh, uh, so, so uh, I'm trying to find it. I tried to find it. Uh, 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 let me look, let me find it. If it's on YouTube, if 
So uh, I, I try to I try to find it. I'm gonna find it right now. I don't know why I took out a future report, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what I got exited. But so uh, the, yeah, on set yeah, thirty nine life. So we, we don't have the video. But I'm gonna I, I want to share what she said. Ahead. So. She, so let's let's read what Bleacher Report said. Ahead of Monday, uh, ahead of a uh, Monday uh, WNBA draft that is today, that is today. Uh, Iowa star Kaitlyn Clark had an opportunity to let to let loose on an iconic show. Clark was a guest on this week episode on Saturday Night Live, and appeared in the weekend update segment that. That where she roasted the co-host Michael Shea for his take on the women's sport. So we, so I, we don't have the video because I'm not allowed because it, uh, it's a uh, it's black my country in, in France. So she, it said that Clark is expected to be number one overall pick for the Indiana Fever on a mon in, in the Monday draft, which will take place in Brooklyn Academy of Music at 7:30 p.m. E.T. after the poking fun of Che, the NCAA all-time leading scoring pay, pay homage to the woman basketball players who paved the way for her. So, here's what she said, and I thanks to all the great players like Cheryl Swoop, Esty, Cynthia Cooper, and Edma Bamor, Clarkson. These are the ones who kicked the door and walk inside. So I want to thank them for the foundation. Fun said, but by giving Che a switch to come the said she he would give to him. The one problem, as Clark Hilarious point, pointed out, is that she actually doesn't ha doesn't have a girlfriend. Ooh, she. Damn. Ooh. That's what happened when you make fun of the woman's uh, basketball team. That's what happened. That's what happens if you make fun of them. So congratulations to Caitlin Clark. And I hope to see the the WNBA draft uh, uh, on this today on Monday. So thank you very much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, uh, don't forget to to on YouTube to like. Subscribe, notify, and link, uh, 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 comment on this podcast. If you like it, you don't comment what I, about your opinion. If you want to follow me on, on social media, uh, you can follow me on Instagram on uh, Pascal underscore Mayala underscore 15. Same thing with threads, Pascal underscore Mayala underscore 15. And also on 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 X formerly Twitter is at Belly versus PMM. You can follow me on my Instagram. And don't forget, you can listen to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple uh, Apple uh, not Apple Music, but Amazon Music, and Podbean. So uh, like. Rate this uh, podcast on any and any platform, and I'll see you next time.